What's good you legends? I hope you're doing dope. Today we're doing something a little bit different and I know that you're going to enjoy it. So a couple of weeks back, I was actually in Houston, Texas. I was shooting a music video. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you already know that because I constantly post all these behind the scenes and all that stuff. So if you are interested in stuff that I'm working on and behind the scenes, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King if you want to check all that out. But while I was out there, this idea came to me and I was just like, dude, everyone is always talking about specs when it comes to cameras. Which one has the best bit rate? Which one has the best frame rate? Which one is higher frame rate? Which one has the highest resolution? And people look at cinema cameras they're like, well, why don't you get this one? Look at all the stuff that it has. Don't get a DSLR, get this. Everybody always has something to say, bro. And I wanted to make a video about this because when it comes to cinema cameras, you really need to think a lot more about the pros and cons. It's not as straightforward as you may think. But I was thinking, dude, Dude, what does mine say? <laughs> Sweet! I need someone who knows more about this than I do. So while I was in Houston, I hit up a special guest, and that is the conversation we're talking about today. So let's get into it. Today I'm here with Brandon Washington. What up? Welcome Good. to the city, brother. Dude, I'm in here in Houston, Texas, man. I hit up Brandon. Actually, Brandon and I have followed each other for a little while now. We sent a couple little 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 DMs there, but I, I decided to just go ahead and take a swing and just be like, hey, man, let's link up. Let's talk about it because I know that Brandon, man, he knows all about cinema cameras. Actually, he knows a lot about gear in general, man. He's a beast. If you haven't checked him out, you're going to click right up. Wait. It's up there. It, it's one of those two places. Go ahead and check him out. He has a lot of great content as well as like a lot of tech stuff and everything. So if you like gear, you got to go over there. But anyway, today we are talking about should you really buy a cinema camera, man? Like, yes. I mean, right now we should go on a mirrorless. You, oh, you're saying yes, you should. Yes. Well, you should buy a cinema camera. Hit him with number one, man. Why should they buy a cinema camera? So I feel like a lot of times when it comes to shooting video, a lot of people immediately run to mirrorless cameras because they're functional, which is a good thing. Right. I think that's a, that's probably a pretty good pro. But you gotta ask yourself, why are you buying this camera? If it's for shooting video, then you should buy a camera that's designed for shooting video. Mm. That's uh, okay. That's really good, actually. I think that's my that's that's my number one argument, and uh, I'm on that mountain. I'm gonna need you to push me off. Yeah, all oh, day, man. If I was to go ahead and rebuttal, Mr. Washington over here, bro, I don't just shoot video. Okay. I do photo as well. Okay. And so having a mirrorless, I mean, it's versatile. And yes, maybe we should stick to one area, but it's versatile. And on top of that, bro, I'm gonna say this. I bet you your thing over there shoots 4K. My bad boy shoots 4K, so what's the big deal? So, okay, here's the other big difference for me, at least when it goes to jumping cinema. Now, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see I shot DSLRs, I shot mirrorless, and I did that for a really long time until I got bit by the dynamic range bug. See, here's the difference. When you shoot on a mirrorless camera, they don't typically give you the same type of dynamic range that you're gonna get on a cinema camera. On top of that, even if it does give you good dynamic range, most of it doesn't really give you like latitude with that dynamic range. Exactly, so pretty much what Brandon's talking about is that maybe, even though my Sony may just boast about have 15 stops dynamic range, right. and, then your, and then your Blackmagic, cause what are you shooting on right now, by the way, bro? I'm shooting on the Blackmagic 6K. Should I show it to him? I show it to him, bro. Show, show him the beast. All right, hold on. Dang. So, so this is the setup right now, and it looks like a lot, but it's not that much. <laughs> I've got an entire video that breaks this whole thing down, but what you get out of a cinema camera is better dynamic range. You typically can get better Kodaks for video, so it's easier not only for your camera to capture higher quality and more dynamic range, but then it's also typically easier for your computer to actually edit that footage. And then on top of that, you get everything you need for video. You get audio input, better preamps for said audio, and then you also get all the monitoring tools like waveforms, false color, grids. I mean, I could go on and on I mean, all day. I mean, I mean, it's true, man. Like Brandon is so right. I'm all about being able to go run and gun real fast, this and that. Like I can just show you right now. This is Brandon setting up this setup right now. I think it took him maybe around maybe 10 minutes, you know, in That's total, yeah. 10, 15 minutes to put it on me. I was up and ready to go in like maybe 10 seconds. You That's know true. what I mean? That's true. So obviously there is a lot more stuff that you get from it, but it does come with a little bit of cost. However, you'd have to weigh it out. And I'm the first one 
want to say this, man. Every single time that I got to get audio, I need to get an XLR input, or I need to be able to record externally, or I need to get false color. Dude, I have to buy another monitor, another little thingy to connect the little headphone jack, which is so wimpy. Then I got to connect an XLR into it. And then all of a sudden, what was a nice run and gun setup with my mirrorless now right. becomes pretty much not as big as this, but I might get kind of close. close. Yeah. I might get pretty close. But hold on, man. You haven't fully convinced me, bro. Okay. Especially today, because you've got cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, the Z Cams, even Red's coming out with more affordable cinema cameras. Like, you can get a really good cinema camera for the price. It's really not that expensive. I mean, the EOS R5 costs like three times as much as a cinema it's camera. It's true. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think that you can get a fully rigged out 4K monitor, you know, cage, you know, handle, the even a hard drive if you wanted to, Absolutely. still cheaper than like buying an R5. Absolutely. So go ahead and kind of wrap it up a little bit. What are some things that they need to be aware of when it comes to a cinema camera? Because if they're coming from like a mirrorless DSLR game. Yeah, so everything slows down when you go cinema. You have to full focus manually most of the time. You typically may need a full fledged crew to actually run your camera. Can you expand on that, bro? Like, why, why would you need a full crew? So you're gonna wanna have somebody who's operating the camera, someone else who's pulling focus, someone else who's there to monitor all of your audio or even run audio externally. I mean, it really is designed for more of a professional set. So is that the reason why when you watch movies, bro, there's like three or four people all huddled around like the camera or something? Yeah, and typically there's like a whole nother group of people that are even away from from the camera monitoring it like wirelessly from another set doing a whole nother list of things. Oh yeah, sorry to cut in just like that editor Joseph here and and I almost forgot one of the things that Brandon was talking about was about this whole crew being somewhere else doing a whole list of things like a client looking at it or a director making notes or whatever it may be and I always wondered how they did that. Well, the way that they do it is with a wireless transmitter. With the crew that I run with along with my boy Les who is a killer on the cam. That's a dope alliteration, you hear that? Killer on the cam. Bars. Doesn't make any sense, Joseph. The one that we used on this shoot was from Hollyland, and a big shout out to them for them sending it out to us. So if you are in the market for a cinema camera, a wireless transmitter might be a good idea. So this is definitely a nice budget option compared to something more expensive, kind of like a Teradek. I know, it looks expensive. They look expensive. Thank you. That's a natural leave it a reference, but anyway, let's move on. And I feel like if you are someone who is looking at a mirrorless camera, thinking about making that jump up to cinema, but you're still very run and gun, or you're still, you know, not really working with the crew, you're a one man banning it, maybe hold off a little bit. That's good. Until you can get your jobs up to the point where they actually kind of justify right. you working with this camera. Because once you go cinema, everything slows down and you focus on all the details. And honestly, it makes you really slow down, but in a way that is very professional. It's just like, right. we, we need a, We need a storyboard, you know, we need to take our mm -hmm. time on our pre-production. And so obviously, man, if you're not a planner, if you're not getting into that, man, maybe <laughs> stay away, from stay, away from, stay away from cinema cameras. Stay away from cinema camera. There's no perfect camera. And trust me, I have looked, I've looked a lot. You can go to my YouTube channel. Bro. There are tons of videos of me <laughs> testing a lot of different things, trying it's to find it. It's almost obscene. It's almost obscene. Or so instead of trying to find the perfect camera, it's more about understanding the different tools that are available. So then when you need that tool, you know where to go to get it. Dude, you should know if you want a cinema camera right here, right now. I hope so. I don't know if we helped you or not. We might've made it more confusing. We, we probably did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I think that is it. Well, go ahead and like this video and subscribe because that's what all the cool kids are doing. Follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King and don't forget about Mr. Brandon Washington over here. Get Fo there. Follow him on Instagram, feel free to hit him up. He's such a cool dude, crazy humble as well. I think I've been hanging out with him for a solid like hour and he's, he's, he's a cool dude, he's a cool dude. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the flip side. Boom.